So next, uh, we take a look at nesting of loops. Now, what are what are nesting of loops? Uh, we also call it as nested loops, right? So whenever we are placing one loop inside the body of another loop is actually called as nesting of, of loop, right? We can we can have a for loop inside a while loop, a do while loop inside a for loop, right? While working uh, with nested loops, the outer will change only when inner loop is completely finished, right? Now, what is this thing? We're uh, going to take a look at it with a practical example. So, let us design some uh, nested loops, uh, some uh, nested uh, loops as in uh, I'll create a new class over here and uh, say nested loops, right? Now what we need to design over here, uh, we're going to take up some scenario in which uh, I want to execute uh, a while loop for let's say three times, a uh, for loop for let's say four times and a do while loop for five times, right. Now how many uh, times the loop will actually gonna run if if I have a scenario like this so how many times the loop will gonna run will it gonna run 3 plus 4 7 7 plus 5 12 times no it will not gonna run for 12 times the straightforward answer is you need to multiply these things so 3 into 4 uh, 3 uh, into 4 is 12 12 into 5 is 60 the loop will actually gonna run for 60 times right so how are we going to design it? Uh, let, let's start with a while loop first. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'll initialize i with 0. So this is a standard. Any loop, uh, the uh, standard format of starting a loop, initializing a loop uh, or a variable uh, is with 0 itself, right? So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to run this while loop for three times. So I'll say while i is less than 3, right? So whatever uh, the number that you need to increment the loop for if it is 30 then you need to give it like 30 because it will gonna run 0 less than 30 right so 0 till 29 so ultimately there will be 30 iterations right so we need to run it for three times we have given it three over here now inside a while loop i need to run for loop for four times so i'll say for print standard i equal to 0 uh, i we have already taken i am going to take j equal to 0 j is less than 4 and then j plus plus right and within for loop i am going to use the do while loop so do what this do will going to do uh, it uh, let us see let us uh, write a do while condition first and the condition should be uh, it should run for five times. So I we have already taken. We're gonna take one more variable, k equal to zero, right? And this will gonna run for five times. So less than five, right? And here, what I'm gonna print? I'm gonna print the value of these loops. So as in, uh, I'm gonna print the value of i. So I'll first say i is plus i right then i'm gonna print the value of j so i'll say plus j then i'm gonna print the value of k right so i'm gonna say k is plus k right let me uh, format it uh, so that it should be more readable so for we have a for loop within a while loop right then we have a do loop within a for loop right all right and then it ends over here all right now there is still uh, some mistake in this loop just think for it we have actually missed to add something 
what we have actually missed is to increment the value of this while loop and this uh, uh, do do loop right over here so what we actually need to do we need to increment the value of uh, do over here so we need to increment the value of k so i'll say k plus plus right and then i need to increment the value of this while loop uh, it initialized with i so where we need to do it we need to do it after this right within the while block so we need to do it over here right now just think about it what this loop will gonna print so whatever that we have written over here how the execution will gonna happen and what it will gonna print just take out a, a notepad uh, and a pen and just uh, try writing these things just try just do a dry run over here and see what will be executed first and after that what will be executed so how and which sequence this loop will gonna follow just pause this video for some time and try to print out these things so just try run this loop you'll find another mistake inside this loop right let us dry run this let us uh dry run this over here right now very first time uh what which loop will gonna execute very first time the outer loop will gonna execute so what it will gonna print uh what the uh, value of i is zero like let, let's say we are doing a dry run over here right so zero is less than three yes it will go inside it for j j is zero less than four yes it will go inside it very first statement this will be printed the value of i is zero right the value of j is zero the value of k is zero right this is the very first statement that gets printed next time what will happen will it increment the while loop will it increment the for loop or will it increment the do loop do while loop right it will actually gonna go inside this loop only right first the inner loop that gets incremented then the outer then after that the later one right so what happens next time it will check whether the condition k is less than 5 yes k is less than 5 what it will do it will again go over here and it will first increment before uh, first increment uh, before going over here it has actually what it has done it has incremented the value of k right to so the k was 1 so k is 1 1 is less than 5 yes it will go over here it will print the value of i to 0 then value of j to 0 and value of k to 1 right then again it will again increment this uh, like this is incremented next time it will be 2 2 is less than 5 yes so it will gonna print again the same thing i will remain 0 k j will remain 0 and this will do and it will gonna run up till 5 so till the time the value is uh, less than 5 basically so it, uh, we need to run it for uh, like up till 4 right we are running from 0 till uh, sorry we are running k for 5 times if you see over here do while is for 5 times right so it, it starts from 0 and it will check whether this uh, when the value becomes 5 is it less than 5 no it will come out so it, this loop will actually gonna run for 3 4 and then it will quit from here then the do like do while loop will end over here once it prints the value of till 4 right now next what happens it will come to the for loop now the turn is of this for loop right now let's see what what happens for loop will gonna check the value of j is 0 it will actually uh, increment the value the very first time it has already printed j 0 next time it has incremented the value of j to 1 so what happens i is still 0 j becomes 1 right j becomes 1 and when we take a look over here what this thing will gonna print what k will gonna print will it gonna print 0 no it will not gonna print 0 why because we have already changed the value of k over here the k is already 5 because we have declared k over here 
right? What happens when the, the value becomes, uh, when we are into this loop, right? When we were executing the last value, the value of i was 0. Value of j was 0. But the value of k was 4. Then it incremented the value of k to 5. So means the value of k was 5. And then we check whether k is less than or equal to 5. It, it was false. It came out of the loop. But the value of k still remains as 5. So what it will going to print? It will actually going to print 5 over here. And that is what we don't want. We want this should actually get reinitialized. So instead of writing k over here, we're going to write, we're going to declare it over here. So next time, once the loop is completed, it will again go inside the for loop and again reinitiate the value of k to 0. So next time, what happens? It becomes uh, j becomes, uh, i becomes 0, j becomes 1, and this becomes 0. Right? Then again, what happens? Next time, this will be 0, 1, this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 4, and this will be, uh, sorry, this will be 4. And again, now, this loop will be implemented. This j. This j will actually going to run up till 2, and then it says 2, 0, 2, 1, then 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, then it will be become 3, 3, 0, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, and then run for 4 times. Right. And once this is over, once this is over, it will again go to the last one, and this will actually going to run for 3 times. Right. So l let us see how this while will going to run then. Let's let's assume uh, the last value that we got over here uh, was 0, 3, and 4. Right. This is the last value uh, when this loop will get incremented up till the last time. We actually going to get this value. Right. Then what happens when this is 4 less than 4, it will go out of this loop right and it will actually gonna increment the value uh, of i so next time i will be one i will be one again it will go inside this for loop and what happens k will again become zero j j will again become zero so it will uh, uh just just give me a moment it will actually gonna turn to be zero and then zero right and then it again initiate all these values so it means if i run this you'll see the output something like this we got some error with the launch just give me a moment oh, we got error in some other class okay let me comment out this Right. So let us run this and let us see if it executes the same way or not. Oh, okay. We got some issues. So what happens over here? This i is being incremented. Have we incremented i or not? Okay. You know what? We did a mistake over here. I just mentioned this as I instead of J. Right? So this is where it got right. Right? So we'll give some uh, more spaces over here. Uh, after K, I'll just give more space. So it should look more clear. Right? Let us run this now. See? Your i, the very first i loop, uh, it ran uh, for 0, then 1, then 2. If you talk about j, it ran for 0, 1, 2, 3, up till 3, right? If you talk about k, it ran for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So this runs for 5 times. This runs for 4 iterations, 0, 1, 2, 3, and this ran for 3 iterations, right? And if you do a total count, if I just copy this thing and go to Excel and paste it over here, 
you will see that total count it shows as 60. So the loop actually ran for 60 times. That is what we have just seen. 3 into 4 is 12, 12 into 5 is 60. So this is how the nested loop actually works. Or you can check this count in this way as well. Just go over here and create uh, a variable initiated from initialize it from zero right and go over here and just say count plus plus and at the end when the loop is completed just print the value uh, total uh, count is plus count right so when the loop completes it says the total count is the total number of iterations over here are 60. So mostly people uh, while they create nested loop they do some mistakes that they keep these loop de dependent on each other right. Like the way what we have done initially we have written uh, end k equal to 0 over here. So these loops should be independent of their outer loop. This loop is completely independent of this outer loop. This loop is completely independent of this while loop, right? This is a way we actually design a nested loop, which means till the time the inner loop uh, does not finish its execution, there should be no change in the outer loop. The outer loop will be executed only and only once the inner loop is, uh, it, it has actually done the entire iterations. Also, the other thing that we talk about the scope of this variable, uh, the scope of this variable is only between this for loop, right? It means if you try to print the value of k over here, it will not going to print. It will going to throw an error. It will not identify what the k is, right? Because we have defined it, we have declared it within this for loop, so will not be able to identify. Initially, we have created it over here at the global level so we were able to identify it but now we have actually initialized it within the for loop so we'll not be able to identify it so the scope of this variable will be within this for loop block only